Hey, I'm Rhett, this is my van, uh, and I figured I would make some videos showing how I solved some problems that I couldn't find answers to on the internet when I looked um, that I feel like are probably pretty common with vans like this. Uh, so, enjoy. So this is my van, as you can see it's not stock. It's a, it was originally in 1999. Uh, E350 Super Duty passenger van and someone put a whole big lift and 4x4 system on it. This is the inside uh, and I've stripped out the entire back so that we can work on the subfloor. Uh, the first thing that I had to deal with, I'll show you, was when I got the van and I stripped out the uh, fuzzy, the carpet, I ended up with all these fuzzies stuck to the floor and I don't know how no one has had this problem before, but uh, it's terrible because your insulation subfloor won't bond to this. So I had to try and get this stuff off. So I tried a couple things. I tried hydrochloric acid over here, which didn't work super well. I've gone over this again. Uh, and then I tried vegetable oil, which apparently does work pretty well. So you can see that this area have largely gotten off the fuzzy stuff and I think it's gonna work. So I think the best way to do it is with a steel wool sponge and vegetable oil. That seems to work the best. Um, the bummer with this is obviously you abrade your paint and scratch it up a little bit. But as you can see, I already have lots of paint problems. Let that focus. There we go. I already have lots of paint problems and I'm gonna have to do a lot of touching up anyway. So I'm just gonna scrub all this stuff and I'm gonna end up repainting. So doing a little bit more repainting isn't the end of the world. So I would just kind of pour the vegetable oil into my hand and then scrape the ever loving heck out of it with this steel wool scrubber that I had, which definitely scraped off quite a bit of the paint, but I couldn't really figure out any other way to get the stuff off. Um, Took a while and it hurt my fingers a whole lot. Hope you don't have to do this, but I would recommend vegetable oil if you have to do something like this in your van. So next step is now that I've covered the entire floor with vegetable oil. Um, whoa, whoa, shit. Um, yeah, like that. I need to wipe down with a rag all of this shit, try to get it out. And then I'm gonna wash it with soap to hopefully get the rest of the vegetable oil out because then I need to rust treat the thing. So I used the rag to get the majority of the vegetable oil off before coming back with the soap and water. Also, I keep sniffling because I'm sick right now, but uh, don't worry, it's not COVID. So I think now I have to get soap and the hose and try to make this work. This is really annoying. Another thing about this build uh, is that I totally forgot to take before pictures. I've actually had this van for a little while um, and drove it around for a bit before starting the build. I'm just kind of a moron and always forget. So, um, looks like a lot of it came off. There's definitely still some vegetable oil on the ground. You can see the way that it's, the way that it's beating like that. There's definitely still uh, hydrophobic material on there um, doesn't seem like it's that much I'm gonna let it gonna let it dry and then come back to it later see how it looks so this is all the stuff I already pulled out I should probably get rid of it honestly I think it's kind of a waste of space so I was messing around with this stuff hydrochloric acid to get rid of the rust and I noticed that, oy, that the glue that was attaching all that gunk that I couldn't quite get all off started peeling up, kind of doing some of this. Looked like it would come off pretty well. So I got an idea. I got some of this stuff and I used Scotch-Brite pad and now it comes out super clean. So you can see the difference between here what I've done and here how it was right after I finished the hose before. I much prefer this. So I'm gonna scrub the entire back of this thing 
with scotch bright pads and hopefully we get it all nice and shiny looking. I did this for a very long time. So this is hydrochloric acid. You get it at Home Depot. It's like the cheapest kind of rust remover you can find. Uh, they call it muriatic acid. It's swimming pool acid. You put it in a swimming pool if it's too basic to change the pH. But muriatic acid is a strong acid and it loves to react with metal and rust and stuff like that. So it's very, very powerful rust remover and you're not supposed to use it on delicate stuff like paint that you care about or whatever but as i said before i don't care that much about this paint because it's so jacked up anyway so this is what i'm doing um i'm working on this giant patch of rust here with this paper towel soaked in hydrochloric acid and you can see it comes yellow when it's kind of spent but you can see i've already worked on this part you can start to see it's eating away a lot of the rust it's eating away at the metal too um, for sure, but I'm gonna repaint this anyway. I'm okay with that. You want to make sure you rinse it with water afterwards because it will kind of continue to eat for a while. Um, you can see it's starting to get to metal through that giant layer of rust. So I think I'm gonna call it for today. I uh, got all this gunk out. Ton of ton of gunk here. Um, I got all of it down, it's still super slippery. All of it down to like a really smooth metal. Now it's time to work on rust, rust removal. So I got, where's the stuff? I got some of this stuff. It's just a little more degreaser. It's a more gnarly product to get off the glue. And then I've got a rust primer, rusty metal primer and spray paint to cover up these rust spots. I'm gonna get my power sander out and try to grind off some of this shit and then we're gonna hit it with muriatic acid and uh, hopefully finish the deal. Here's a five second demonstration of a bad method for rust removal. So this just takes forever. Uh, I've worked on this rust spot for a long time, hit it with some uh, hydrochloric acid and the rust is just persisting in there. I think this part is gonna take a lot longer than I had anticipated. I'm pretty discouraged. This is not working great. It's really hard to get the rust out with the sander, but I googled it, which I guess I probably should have done before. And apparently there's an attachment I can buy for my angle grinder that has a wire brush on it that should, uh, that should help with this. So I think I'm gonna call it for today and come back at it with the wire brush tomorrow. Hopefully I can really just get all of this stuff out. So I went to Home Depot and I got a few different things to try and grind this rust out. Got one of these for the drill. Got one of these for the drill also, for littler spots. And then I got this attachment for the angle grinder that is supposed to be able to remove rust. Uh, uh, remove rust. So, I'm gonna give it a crank. I was gonna have a voiceover here raving about this thing, but then I realized that I had actually already recorded a clip of how I felt about it. So, here it is. This thing is now my favorite tool of all time. It cranks rust like nobody's business. I mean, look at that. All that metal was so rusty and now it's just shiny and perfect. The only problem is I'm burning through this kind of quick. So I think I'm gonna go get like six more of these and the whole back is gonna take me like a day. So that's clearly, that's clearly working really well. I'm gonna try out these drill attachments for some of the nooks and crannies. This thing works pretty well too. Look at how the rust in those little dimples kind of disappears after I go by with the, uh, with the brush. So I finished prepping the big worst spot and it looks pretty darn good to me. You can see it's really badly pockmarked, but I used this 
to get most of the stuff out of those deepest pockets. And now I'm gonna hit it with some rusty metal primer that I have right here. And, uh, and we're gonna paint this spot. So I have my technique down. I come through with the big grinder to get the big shit. And then I go after the little bubbles and all that kind of stuff with the drill on the little diameter thing. And it's working pretty well. I've primed part of it. Um, and I'm moving faster down the cab. So check it out. Here's what it looks like. I use the drill. I've found a couple small rust spots here. I've got them with a the little wire brush and I'm kind of gentle because I don't want to mess up all the rest of the paint too bad. And then this is what it looks like when I spray it later with primer. Well, I'm done. Uh, I've got all the fuzzy removed, all the glue removed, ground out all the rust and repainted with primer and gloss black. So have a look. Here's that giant spot that had so much rust before. Gone over all of this in gloss black, over all the areas that had lots of rust. And I'm gonna call this part of the build done. So if I'd had all the knowledge that I have now when I started this process, um, I definitely would have made a few changes. I still would have done the vegetable oil and this steel wool pad to get rid of the carpet, but then I would have gone straight to goof off this industrial adhesive remover for the rest of the glue. Then instead of screwing around with the sander and the hydrochloric acid, I would have gone for one of these grinding wheels like this, followed by a wire brush like this and a smaller one to get the little spots. And then I did like my choice of paint. I used Rust-Oleum Rusty Metal Primer and then a Rust-Oleum uh, Gloss Protective Enamel. And I think I was happy with those. And I think if you do it like that, it'll take you a lot less time than it took me. But good luck.